This episode is sponsored by Mosquito Shield. Mom's mosquito season is coming and we want you to be prepared. We use Mosquito Shield in our home and it really helps my littlest who is so susceptible to those big ugly mosquito bites and it makes it so nice for us to be able to sit out in our backyard in the evenings and not worry about mosquitoes. Go to moshield.com or get the link in our show notes to get them to come out to see you. Gather Moms listeners will get $25 off their first month when they mention Gather Moms. Hey moms, welcome to the Gather Moms podcast. My name is Kate. And I'm Rebecca. We've created this space just for you because we're both moms and we get you. Yes, we believe there truly ain't no hood like the motherhood and we need to be in this together. We also believe we can't mom well without Jesus, so you're going to hear us talk about him too. Follow us on Facebook and Instagram at Gather Moms and make sure to hit subscribe so you don't miss a single episode. All right, mamas, let's jump in. Hey moms, welcome to the Gather Moms podcast. Listen, I told Kate I wanted to share this because I always feel like it's a really big day in my house when I finally shave my legs. <laughs> After winter hibernation? After winter hibernation, everything's gotten really soft and long <laughs> and then it's time to jump back in. And this year I bought one of those um, plans. Subscriptions. Subscriptions to the Razor where they send you the little refill cartridges. Billy, you're... No, I didn't do Billy. I think mine's called Athena. Ooh. Have you heard of that one? The goddess Athena. It was the color of the handle. I mean, that's what That's what me. did it for you. I just How figure. How much is a subscription like that? Mine was $10. A and month? Then, no. I paid $10 for the razor, and okay. I got two little cartridges. Okay. And then in six months, which I probably am going to need them. Maybe they're sending it to me in three months. They send me like five more cartridges okay. for thirty dollars. Okay. And then you either decide if you want more at that point or you pause your subscription until you're ready for them. I would need to evaluate how often I am going through cartridges. Because I think I go through them my hair, you know, I have like five hairs and they're all fine and thin. <laughs> and it's the same on my legs. Yeah. And so you I don't, don't need that much. I don't go through razors very quickly. So right. my Lydia has started shaving and she's always coming to me and asking me for a new cartridge. I'm like, bro, what are you doing? But her hair is different. Oh. So I know it's time to shave my legs when I start, you know, I put on shorts because it's like a sunny day and then I'm walking through a parking lot and I can feel the breeze ruffling my hairs on my leg. You can feel it on your leg hair? I think so. And I'm, I'm like, going to have to think about that real hard this week. <laughs> I don't know that I've ever felt the wind on my leg hair. I have felt it. And then I'm like, mm, that's probably, that's probably a bridge too far. Kate. Okay, you, it's time. It's time. Nobody can see it anyway because you're blonde. I had my... It, I, it really is a blessing. You know, there are so many things where I would love a, a trade out just as far as ease of like maintenance, you know, like how we are as women, like some things are easier than others. But I will tell you, this thin, fine blonde hair comes in really handy on leg hair because you can go a long time and do, you know, nobody would know that the hairs are there. I just want women to know that if you don't shave your legs for like three months in the winter, it grows back slower. Do you think it slows down? 100%. It's you people that are shaving every single day that it is growing at light warp speed. I wonder what the what the doctors would say on that. We do need some research. Real? Somebody okay. out there researched this for us. How often do you forget the hairs on your ankles? Like, that's my most missed spot. There's hair on my ankle? Yeah, you know, like around your little ankle bone, your little whatever that little... I don't know if I have hair down there. I'm certain you do. <laughs> okay, and here's a question. Do you ever shave your toe hair? No. Do My toe is happy. He does not need to be shaved. But do you have little hairs on your toe? No, I don't think I do. When you go get a pedicure, do they shave your toe hair? No. Oh my gosh, can you imagine if they did that? Well, they're helping my feet out. Shouldn't they take care of all the parts? I guess so, but I have little blonde hairs on my big toe. I'm sure on all of them, but every once in a while it bothers me and I shave it. Does it blow in the breeze too? <laughs> think they get that log listen our listeners have learned a lot about us today you know you we're toe hair we're like almost 150 episodes in and have not talked about toe hair yet so <laughs> that is so true you guys heard it here first today come on there's all the hairs do you have little chin hairs nope what you don't have like little 
Like one little random wiry chin hair. Nope. My chin is just happy as can what? be. What? Yep. Okay, now I don't get like a mustache. Do you get that? Nope. Sure don't. Well, your hair just grows in all the right <laughs> places. <laughs> make a t-shirt that says that <laughs> my hair grows in all the right places i have one random hair that grows on my chest and it's black okay guys i'm gonna stop her now because she's starting down that road where she starts to tell too much and so it's gonna be tmi pretty soon so we're gonna stop right there at the chest hair and we're gonna flip over oh to the podcast okay <laughs> this is a reminder <laughs> but every once in a while i'll be in my you know i tweeze my eyebrows in my car yes you do lots of things in your car. Mm, for sure. <laughs> Listen, keep some keep some tweezers in your car. You're sitting at a stoplight that the outside light is the best light. It is, but don't do it at a stoplight. The light's oh, going to turn. You oh, do. You, okay. Mm, mm. When you're parked, I'm not parking a Thank lot. you. Okay. Thank you. Let's park first. But it's very handy. But so every once in a while, I'll be looking in that vanity mirror, and I'm like, oh, there's that one hair on my chest. <laughs> Are you wearing a low-cut top? How are we seeing that chest hair there, No, just, you know. When we start springing, when we start springing, you know, you just wear a little less. I mean, not that much less. <laughs> I told y'all. I told y'all she was going down that road. Okay, fix this. Go ahead and believe me. Talk we, about whatever we're supposed to be talking about. We're you talking about. You started this, by I the did, way. I did. I did. I just didn't know we were going to go to chest hair from toe hair. Sorry. Listen, we're talking about mom guilt today. There is no guilt in your chest hair. Good for you. Yeah. Tweeze it and go. I have no guilt related to hair. None. Hopefully. None. Except for how much it costs to maintain my hair. Sometimes I feel guilty about that. Like the, the hair on your head. Yeah. 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 Like, ooh. Listen, e-salon. I mean. <gasps> okay, we can't we start can't, with we the We can't e-salon. start that. But listen, I'll, I'll get on my stories and tell you all about e-salon. Okay. Okay. Because it's good stuff. All right, listen. Let's talk about mom guilt. Because that is why we're here today. Mm-hmm. We all have it. Um, I think what I've noticed in my motherhood is it kind of is seasonal. Okay. There are times where I feel a lots of mom guilt. There yeah. are times where I feel real free. Yeah. Free to say no uh-huh. to all the things. And so I do think it's kind of one of those things where you learn as you go in your motherhood journey how to deal with some of these things better. And I do think the older you get as a mom, the more you're able to like think rationally mm-hmm. and make good choices. I think mom guilt is one of them. Mm-hmm. And so I'm, you know, teenage motherhood time, which maybe it comes back around when you're a grandma. I don't know. But I feel like I'm starting to feel real good in this area. So I really wonder, we should ask our mothers, because I feel like um, I potentially, I think I've heard my mom say, like, then once the kids get to adulthood, like, if things aren't going well for that grown child, they start to feel some guilt about, oh, what did I do wrong? Yes. That, you know, how did I yeah. affect this? Maybe it does come back around. That, for me, is the biggest piece of where the mom guilt is, is ha- am I screwing them up? Yeah, I don't have that. Like, really? Yeah, I'm like, good for you, kid. Figure it out. Really? Okay, because I feel my mom guilt is related to, am I going to mess them up? In the long haul. Yeah. Am I doing something that is going to cause like a schism in their, you know, young soul that then they have to deal with in therapy? We've actually even started making jokes about at, ho- at our home about like, that's fine. You can bring that up in therapy later. <laughs> But, but therapy is good for everybody. I no. kind of think you should go anyway. And it, we're trying to normalize that. That's like, right. And we talk to the kids about, we are not going to get this thing perfectly right. No. Especially with our oldest. By the way, I just posted like a TikTok the other day and it was this guy and he was like, he was making pancakes and he said, you know, all, all the pancakes end up coming out great except that first one. And you really just have to apologize to that first one. And you know, kids, it's like the first pancake. You know, that it just, it's like, you just, the griddle's not hot enough yet. You haven't quite figured out how it's going to go. And so that one pancake kind of comes out looking a little question mark. Okay, see, because I'm about to launch my first pancake. And I feel like he's a real good one. He's done amazingly well. He is a good pancake. I'm just saying, for us, like, we have kind of... Because it's really not about the pancake itself. The Everything's r- same for the pancake. The batter's the same, everything. It's the chef that's in charge of making it. And so for Jeremy and I, it's just been kind of like, we we have had to sit him down, especially like when he turned 16, and we just were like, listen, you're our first 16-year-old. You're the first kid we've taught how to drive. You're the first kid that, you know, we're, you're, you're getting a job, but like, we're not going to get this right all the time. And you're not going to get it right all the time. And so let's just plan to offer grace both ways. That there's just just an umbrella of grace here 
all around as we try and sort this out together. That's right. No, and I think that's good. I think it's good to have that expectation going in because that's where I think part of our mom guilt comes from. Yeah. We don't have good expectations for how it's supposed to go. Yes. So then if you don't have that right mindset, then you walk into all kind of pitfalls Mm -hmm. and you start to feel guilty about everything. Mm -hmm. Mom guilt comes from trying to hold ourselves to an unrealistic standard. Yes. Somewhere we thought that we were supposed to be superhero mom and get it all right and perfect, never make a mistake. And I'm not really sure where we got this from. I do know that, you know, growing up as a child, and you've talked about this before too, watching those sitcom moms. Yeah. I don't remember them being perfect though. I don't know. I don't think that I got my personal superhero mom idea from sitcoms. I think it was just self-imposed. Like I was just an achiever kid and I just wanted to be a great mom. Yeah. And when you're good at other things, you just think, well, I'll be good at this too. Yeah. (laughs) And then you get there and you're not. (laughs) Well, you're good at it, but nobody's going to be perfect. And we talk about this a lot that like perfection is just a stupid goal. It's just stupid. It's stupid for you and it's stupid for your family. Because let's say that somehow you end up pulling off quote unquote perfection. Let's just say somehow you manage to figure that out. Then you're setting up your children for failure because you think of how much pressure you put on yourself to be a perfect mom. Okay. Now your daughters and your sons are watching that. So then they go into parenthood thinking that this is how it's going to be. Do you want them to live with that kind of pressure? No, certainly not. And so we just, we don't want to do that. We have got to remove the idea that anybody is going to be perfect. Well, and I just think kids are not, they don't see the mistakes that we see. So I think they, a lot of times think we are perfect with the mistakes. Correct. Because in their little kid mind, it was just the best thing ever. That's exactly right. Mom did so good. Yeah, that's right. Because I don't, I mean, I don't honestly look back at birthday parties and things like that and think, oh, she should have done this or she should have done that. I look back with all these beautiful memories of like, that was awesome. Yes. And the things that we're rating ourselves by, the kids are not rating us by. No. You know, I feel mom guilt because, you know, they're having to buy their lunch at school because I didn't have time to get to the grocery store and they're like, they say ever. I just nuggets. Buy my lunch at school. Yes. I'm gonna sneak in an ice cream too while I'm here, you know. And a bag of chips. Man, <laughs> that bag of chips. It's like so many times on our lunch account. I'm like, why do you need this many bags of chips? Okay, but that's good. Let's say some of the things that we feel guilty about out loud. So buying lunch at school, that was one of yours. Um not being able to make it to every school function. Yes. So every field trip, every class party, every Mom, move with mom day, every, you know, being able to volunteer at the school. Anything related to just all the things you could be doing at their school. Okay, screen time. Mm. We always feel bad when we give them too much screen time. Mm -hmm. I feel like I've lost that guilt in my life. I don't have that anymore. I feel pretty good about. (laughs) But I do think as a young mom, you were like, the Surgeon General says they (laughs) should only have 14 minutes of screen time per day. Yeah. We were running on at least three hours. Girl, listen, (laughs) we never, we never made it under the mark. I think there's mom guilt about food. Yes. You know, am I feeding them enough good food? Are they trying different foods? Do they have a colorful plate? Is this, you know, we've done five nights of chicken nuggets and mac and cheese. Is this going to mess them up forever? So a lot of mom guilt about food. Uh, Yelling. Mm. I had lots of mom guilt about yelling because I would have days where I felt like I had yelled all day day <laughs> I was like they don't even know what my regular voice sounds like I just yelled all day I'm a yeller though y'all I, y'all should know that from the podcast people don't believe me but I'm a yeller I still haven't heard you do it I think spiritual things I feel guilt about you know oh we're not doing family devotions <laughs> you know and nobody's memorized scripture around here yet uh, <laughs> You go to tuck them in at night, and I just want them to go to sleep. And then I'm like, okay, Kate, you got to pray with them. Like, I hear the Holy Spirit being like, just pray, ma'am. It doesn't have to be long, you know. But I just feel a lot of guilt about, are we doing enough spiritually? Uh, working when you feel like, uh, especially when they have these random days off. But, like, I didn't know about it, so I'd already planned a bunch to get a bunch done that day. Yeah. And then you feel like you've wasted this whole day off because you had to work or get all these projects done. And you're like, man, I probably should have spent time with them today. I know. But to be honest, I mean, maybe when they're little. But, like, you know, once they hit, like, grade school and stuff, uh, my kids are perfectly happy to not spend the day with me. They just want to bust a chill and watch some movies and Philly fart around in their rooms. <laughs> That's a new one for you. Philly fart. I haven't heard that one yet. 
I think uh, mom guilt about how we handle crisis situations. So we've especially been working through some of those things. And I can, in, in the moment when it's happening, I'm thinking to myself, am I handling this right? Or is this, I mean, honestly, is, is this, this going something, into counseling later? <laughs> is this yes. something that is going to come up in therapy later? Really? Yes. yes. And, you know, just like, just like, am I, am, am I doing this right? And feeling guilty of like, maybe I didn't do enough here. or Maybe I didn't lean in the right way or use the right words. Um, I have one for, and it gets a little older when they're about to go into middle school and they have all these opportunities to play all these sports. And you're like, oh my gosh, I have never even showed you a volleyball. <laughs> And like the girl next to her has been in volleyball since age three. Yeah. And you're like, oh, I, yeah, I missed it. Yeah. I missed that boat. Yeah. And then you feel like you've screwed them up for their entire <laughs> grade school career through high school. Cause you're like, I'm sorry. I didn't take you to basketball camp when you were four. Yeah. Yeah. That's a lot to deal with. Thankfully I haven't dealt with that one. All these, uh, all the other ones have registered with me. Oh, but not the sports. Yeah. Music. You got your, you've got a little one starting violin. You are like in the music crowd now. Come I on. know, but you know, I don't make her practice every day, and I, you know, you do feel some guilt about that because you're like, she could probably be the next. What's a what's a violin, famous violinist? You were asking the wrong person. <laughs> I don't even know. She could be the next. Hmm. That's what's so crazy, though. I don't really expect my kids to be the next, you know, major superstar in a sport. I just want them to get to do it. Through high school because it looks fun. Yeah. And I really only feel mom guilt when I see her violin teacher. His name's Dimitri, by the way, and he's from somewhere in Eastern Europe. I bet Europe. there's a famous violin player named Dimitri. Okay. Just, yes, I'm sure. And he, he, I feel the mom guilt from him a little bit where he's like, she didn't practice five days this week. <laughs> I'm like, nah, bro. <laughs> you have no idea what all we but have wait, going on. But wait, listen to her. She sounds so good. Mm. Well, She's well, doing well. great. Yeah, it's not good. Okay, the other thing, the other thing, and people are in different camps on this. I will say, another mom guilt thing for me, and this is probably the last one I'll be able to think of, is um, taking your kid to get physicals every year. I just need the world to know that I don't believe that's necessary after they reach age five. And I'm not going to do it. I'm not going to take my children who are perfectly healthy, like I'm looking at them, they're perfectly healthy, they're growing healthy, they're reading, they're writing, they're running, they're, we don't have any chronic illnesses. Like, friends, I, I'm not taking them in every year to get a physical. For why? What? It's You're, free, Kate. But you get a free well check every year. Okay, I know how much they weigh. I know how tall they are. But I it's know. so fun when the doctor puts no. on that little chart. No. He shows you the little arc. You're like, look. Look how much care. they've grown. Cannot care. So what I need to stop is, have I told the story before about last year I called the pediatrician to get Lydia's physical done for middle school athletics? And I was trying to get her, you know, trying to get it scheduled. And they said, well, has she been seeing another physician? And I said, no. And they said, well, she was here a year ago for a sick child visit, but we haven't seen her for a well visit for three years. And I she's said, she's been well. I said, okay. And they said, well, so you haven't been seeing someone else? And it took all I had to not be like, what you mean to say is, way to go, mom. You are, that kid is so healthy that you have not had to come to see us. And I am so proud of you. She should have said that. You're right. You're right. So anyway, so I was like, mm, okay, well, good talking to you. And I just went down to the urgent care and we did the physical there. Listen, throw in the dentist then because you know when you take your kid to the dentist and they haven't been brushing their teeth that you get the side eye from that too. And they want to add on all these add-ons. I'm like, get out of here with your fluoride and your sealants and your just clean the teeth and let's move along down the and road. And listen, I think you should just be honest and say we don't floss in our house because I who does? Who? Well, maybe y'all do. Do y'all floss? Okay, Jeremy is a daily flosser. No one else in our Who house has does. time for that. And I want to tell the dentist, if you care about it that much, then you come over to the house and make them do it. Like, we're managing enough over here, friend. Yes. Flossing is way low on the totem pole. Although I did get the little stick flossers this year. Yeah. And it's kind of a game changer. That's what Jeremy uses. Yeah. yeah. Oh, okay. See? Yeah. 
I feel less judgment towards him now because he's not wrapping it around his fingers and like getting wow. in there with the floss. Wow. Yeah. Okay. No, but he does use it. He's serious about his teeth. So he uses that, the little, with the stick and the little, it looks like a, yeah. I don't know what that looks like. A flag? I don't know. Not anyway. And he has a tongue cleaner. Oh my gosh. Our dentist hands him out. They're these like plastic they bend and you clean your tongue. She's real big on clean tongues. I wish y'all could see my face right now. <laughs> Actually, you can if you go to YouTube. You can watch this podcast on YouTube, and you can see my face right now. No, the man, the man has a hygiene routine. He does his neti pot in the shower every day too. Listen, he's serious about his hygiene. He's doing neti pot. I he's do doing not tea. think this is what God intended for us when He made Adam and Eve in the garden. <laughs> Tongue cleaners and neti pots. I don't. Yeah, he's serious. I'm so impressed. I am, I know I am too. Well, moms, if that'll make you feel guilty, right there, Jeremy's knocking it out of the park. Yeah, we're not with doing all his that body hygiene. Yeah, I'm barely shaving my legs. So I mean, if my kids go to bed without brushing their teeth, I am not caring. Not it's real fine. worried. We'll do it in the morning. Yeah, not real worried. So listen, I think this whole idea of guilt for moms, I just think it's it's common. We need to normalize the fact that, and we have felt guilt our whole lives for different things from childhood up. Not being good at something, not achieving a certain goal, um, looking around us at other people that we think are doing better. There are all kinds of ways that we put this pressure on ourselves. And I think when we get to motherhood moms, it really has become this bigger than us job Mm -hmm. because you're taking on the care of little humans. And especially mamas, when you add one, two, three, four, five kids, it is a lot of work. Yeah. Things are going to get dropped. Things are going to get missed. Things that you might have been really good at with one kid, you're really bad at with the third kid Mm -hmm. because you've just lost the margin for that. And the world is constantly looking at us saying that we should be doing any number of things. That's the whole thing with social media. When you get on there and you just see the reels and the ads flying by of all these, just like how to take care of your skin, how to take care of your hair, how to cook organic sourdough bread, all those things, you can feel like, It is an unattainable, impossible goal. Yes. So I think as moms, we have to just say that out loud. Look, I cannot be this perfect mom. Mm -hmm. And I don't think God expects me to be a perfect mom. No. And I think there is a, there is a, there is a shadow side to mom guilt. But I think the, the light side of it is it comes because we want to be good moms. Exactly. You know, if you're feeling mom guilt because what this role that God has given you is important to you and you want to do a good job at it. Exactly. And so that piece of it is okay. It's when it becomes crippling or debilitating or consuming that it's, it's problematic, which is the case for a lot of us. And this is one area of motherhood that I really don't believe you can find quick fix or easy answers to. I don't think there's a book out there that you can read that's suddenly going to make you not feel guilty. For me, mom guilt is a spiritual issue. Yeah. I really believe that your relationship with God is what's going to help you create a right worldview and understanding of yourself and motherhood in order to be what you're, what God wants you to be. Yes. And so I think it would be really good for us to just talk through what is, from God's point of view, what does this actually mean to us? And the first thing I want to talk about is that guilt is not a feeling that we need to carry. It's a state. And, and listen to me when I talk about this, because I think we hate to talk about sin and guilt, but when we're looking at scripture and the Bible, we are guilty, mm-hmm. each and every one of us. Mm-hmm. We have sinned. We have messed up. There are things that I'm going to do every single day of my life that don't fall in line with God's law. Mm-hmm. I am going to choose selfishness some days. I am going to choose ease of mothering some days. I am going to not meet a need correctly. That's because I'm guilty and I'm not perfect. Yeah. And when I come to grips with that and just decide that I'm going to align myself with God in that and say, you're right, God, I am guilty. I'm a sinner. Scripture says for everyone has sinned. We all fall short of God's glorious standard. When I go ahead and just admit that, it honestly frees you up to then receive the grace that he's ready to offer. Frees you up and frees your kids up. You know, if we're trying to teach our children the gospel, if we're trying to live out our need for a savior, we have to be imperfect in front of our children. Um, And every time that we are imperfect, every time that we fall short, is an opportunity for us to share the gospel with them. Exactly. And it changes the way you move forward. I want you to think about this. When you continue in a state of mom guilt, you become the victim. Mm. And so you move forward in life as a victim, that everyone's against you, everything's against you. And that's not right. But when I can go ahead and admit, you know what, you're right, I am guilty and I'm not going to be perfect, it changes the way I move forward in motherhood. Mm -hmm. 
Because now I get to receive the grace that God has for me and go, thank goodness it's not all up to me. Mm-hmm. Thank goodness God actually came and sent his son Jesus in order to make a way for me to find victory. Yes. Instead of a victim, we're a victor. Yes, and it, I think that's so good, Rebecca, to think about that we are going to mess up. Like, it's inevitable, so we shouldn't be surprised by it. And that, you know, perfection is never the goal. Because I think kind of what you're talking about here is the difference between guilt and shame. Yes, that guilt says, I've done something wrong. Shame says, I am wrong as That's a right. person. That's right. And and we just have to be very careful that we don't slip into shame. Um, there's a little bit where guilt says, okay, I messed up, or that didn't go great, or I might have an opportunity to change or, or do something differently. Shame is when we're looking at ourselves and saying, I'm messing everything up. I'm, I'm not good enough. I'm not equipped to do this. Um, and it it ties back to exactly what you started with and this kind of where we're looking at scriptures is it's about identity. Yep. And if our identity is secure and who we believe God is and what he has called us to, then we can feel some guilt and move on. If we don't have that at our core, at our foundation, then when we do mess up, we just go into that shame cycle and can get into a really dark place. And I think just what you said about modeling this for our kids, you know, the way I move forward in life models to my kids the way they move forward Mm -hmm. in life. So the more that I can showcase to them the beauty of God's grace, the more that they're going to be able to embrace that in their life too. And we all know that famous scripture, John 3, 16, for God so loved the world, he sent his only son, that whoever believes in him shall not perish, but have eternal life. But we sometimes don't read the next verse, verse 17. It says, For God did not send his son into the world to condemn it, but to save the world through him. And in the message version, I want you to re- I want to read it to you because it for me it makes it so much more clear. It says, God didn't go to all the trouble of sending his son merely to point an accusing finger, telling the world how bad it was. He came to help to put the world right again. Anyone who trusts in him is acquitted. Mm. That when I decide, you're right, God, I am guilty, I'm not going to be perfect, that that not only provides the grace but the acquittal to go, it's not up to me, it's up to Jesus. Mm -hmm. And when God sent him into the world, it wasn't to showcase all of our guilt and go, oh my gosh, you people are so terrible. It's to say, look, I know you can't do it, Mm -hmm. so I'm going to come do it for you. Yeah, And that's exactly what Jesus does. And when we allow ourselves to fall into what you talked about with the shame, that it's not just I did something wrong, but I am something wrong, think about that, how that changes your direction. Instead of moving forward, you're going backward. Mm -hmm. And when you go backward, moms, we just, it's like a cycle. I see like a tornado. It's just like the spinning cycle, exhaustion, depression, anxiety, worry, control, all those things, which we've talked about in our mom struggles. Those are the things that start to tie us down because we're allowing this identity of shame to determine how we act as a mom. And we say things like this, like, God can't be proud of me. Mm. God made a mistake when he made me a mom. Mm. I think God probably loves her more because she's a better mom. God is so disappointed in me. Those are lies. Mm -hmm. Those words never come out of the mouth of God. Right. But when you are in that shameful identity, you start to believe so much stuff that's not true. Mm. God does not say that about you. He is so, he gave you that child because he knew that you were the right person for the job. But he didn't leave it all up to you and ask you to be super mom. Yeah. He said, hold my hand, let's do it together. And mom guilt is about deciding that it's not all on my shoulders. Yeah. It's not all just what you said. Like if I don't do a good job with this kid, their soul is forever ruined. Yeah. No, because their soul is in God's hands. That's right. And so we have to be able to release that back to God and say, you know what? I just want to partner with you, God. Mm. And where I am weak, you are strong. So I don't want you to believe the lie that you are full of guilt and you can never get past it. I want you just to go ahead and confess it right there before the Lord and say, you're right, God. I'm guilty and I receive your son, Jesus, and your grace. And that's how I want to be a mom for my kids. Yeah. Think about your kids when they do something wrong, as they all do. Do you want them to run and hide from you? Right. Do you want them to decide that you're not a safe place to go and share that whatever they did wrong to? Right. We would never want our kids to do that. Yeah. So why would we think that God wants us to do that? Yeah. You know, it's making me think about the story of Peter. Do you remember that Peter, when Jesus was crucified, you know, he denied him. And, um, you know, Jesus had, had started to tell Peter that he had big plans for him. But after Jesus died, you know, Peter went back to what he knew. He went back to fishing. (laughs) He went back to just this kind of, I just would imagine that that time for him was probably dark. 
and he wasn't sure how to walk into this future that that God had clearly told him that he that he had for him. And you know, Jesus is so kind because um, you know Peter and his friends were out fishing, and when Jesus reappeared in his reincarnated body, he went out to where Peter was, where he was fishing, and he invited him to breakfast. And I just I just think that's that's the God that we serve. That's the Jesus who loves us, who says. I mean, and you think about, I mean, what Peter did was bad. <laughs> yes, yes. <laughs> you know, that he, he did deny him. And the Jesus he loves so much. And so you can just imagine that that shame could have taken over him and just changed the trajectory of his life forever. But instead, we have a God who comes to us and says, I, I know you're feeling really bad about this, but it doesn't, it actually doesn't matter. I still want a relationship with you. And I have better plans for you if you'll just come alongside me. And so I think that's where we are as mamas, where we can we can make mistakes and we can want to retreat and hide and live in our shame. And Jesus says, no, I have plans. I have plans for you to prosper and to harm you, not and not to harm you, to give you a hope and a future. Just come on out into the light with me and I'll walk with you and show you how. And moms, we should know this better than anyone else because we raise these sweet babies every day. Yep. And as much as they drive me crazy and do things I don't like, I mean, the love I have for them is just like it wants to bust out of me. Yes. Because we're just so proud of them. Mm -hmm. And I just hate that we would ever think that our God thought any differently about us. Yeah. Because he is just so proud of us. Yeah. He's so excited for the good things we do. And when we do something that's wrong, he already knows that we've done it. So just come sit with me. Yes. Just like I would want my child to do. Come right. sit with me. Right. And I hope that our kids know that because when they go out into the world one day, I don't want ever I don't want them to ever feel like they have to hide anything from me. Right. That my love is such a safe place that they are welcome to share anything that they've done and know that I'm still going to wrap my arms around them and love them. I think, you know, when we try to battle this whole idea of mom guilt, it's easy to get into that um mode of earning like well I'll just do a better job I'll mm. just try harder I'll just do more than the next mom or mm. I'll just you know it's almost like we just up our game a level mm. because we think that's going to make it better and I really believe that all that does is just continue that cycle yeah it just makes us even more exhausted than we were the day before yep. even more bitter than the day before all the things that we've kind of talked about up to this point in the podcast you know where we just we get tired of being a mom some days and we just don't want to do it so if you are allowing yourself to sit in that place of mom guilt, I want you just to hear this today, that God loves you, mm -hmm. that you are free from that, that he never expected you to be a perfect mom. Your kids actually don't expect you to be a perfect mom. Just like we said before, so many times our kids don't see half the things we see, and they still think you're just the greatest thing in the whole wide world. Mm -hmm. And just like Kate said, I want them to see when I make a mistake that it's okay because we have a God who loves us and welcomes us back. The last scripture I want to share with you is from Colossians 1, 19 through 23. And this is the New Living Translation. It says this, For God in all his fullness was pleased to live in Christ. And through him, God reconciled everything to himself. He made peace with everything in heaven and on earth by means of Christ's blood on the cross. This includes you, who were once far away from God. You were his enemies, separated from him by your evil thoughts and actions, yet now he has reconciled you to himself through the death of Christ in his physical body. And as a result, he has brought you into his own presence. And you are holy and blameless as you stand before him without a single fault. But you must continue to believe this truth and stand firmly in it. Don't drift away from the assurance you received when you heard the good news. Mm. And when you experience mom guilt, your first reaction is to drift away from that truth. Yeah. And figure out what in my own power can I do to medicate this and make it better. Mm -hmm. And this verse reminds us that we don't, we don't do that. We run back to God and we say, remind me who I am. Mm -hmm. Remind me what you say about me. And remind me that when you sent Jesus Christ to die for me, there were sins that I didn't even know I was going to commit in that moment. But he died for every single one of them. And so now I do. I stand before you holy and blameless without a single fault. That's right. That's who you are. That's who you are. And moms, I think that, um, you know, here at Gather Moms, one of our biggest desires is for you to truly see yourself as God sees you because we know how much pressure is on you from the world and the social media and just even the mom next door that you think might be doing a better job than you. There's a thousand things that you can look at to make you feel less about yourself. 
But when you mom out of that identity that God's given you and how much he loves you, it actually makes you the best mom you can be for your kids. Mm -hmm. Because God doesn't want you to be like the lady down the street or the person on TV or whatever you're looking at. He knew that there were unique gifts and abilities in you that your kids needed because of you. Yeah. So when you just cling to that identity that God's given you, it's going to give you the freedom to mom in such a way that when you do mess up, because you will, you can go, that's okay. Yeah. Because I have a bigger God. That's right. I'm a sinner saved by grace. That's right. And I get to model that for my kids. Hey, moms, um, we're so glad that you're here. And we want to make sure that you know that we have an online gather group going on. And you can still jump in. We've had new people jump in each week. And we're so thankful that they're there. And our conversations have been so, so rich good. Yes. and have helped. It's been such a blessing to me Yes, to leave the conversations. And, you know, like the last time we talked about marriage and to go, okay, what's working? And we asked what's working in my marriage, what's not working, what are we going to do about it? And to just, I don't know, have a practical space to talk through that with some other moms who get it was huge. And so moms, we want to just make sure that you have the opportunity to be a part of that. And so we're doing that through our Patreon community. So you just go to patreon.com slash gather moms or download the Patreon app and then just look up gather moms and you will get access to that group when you support us at the here for more $10 level. And our next group is coming up on Thursday, April 18th. So make sure you join before then. And what we're going to do is we're going to email you the Zoom link so you can jump on Zoom with us that night. And we're going to talk about another mom struggle together. And it really is the best time mm -hmm. to get here from other moms that you can go, oh, my gosh, I'm not alone. Yeah. It's, it's like what we're doing here, but we're just all getting to have the conversation together. And you get to contribute. And you get to ask your questions and share what's going on with you and stuff. So we would just love for you to be a part of that. We love you so much. Thanks for joining us today, moms, and we'll see you next time. Bye.